In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a cutout text effect in Photopea. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to click New Project, and I'm going to choose a full HD sized document, which is 1920 by 1080 pixels, and I'm going to click Create. But you can start with whatever size document you like. It's just some of the settings I've already memorized, I know that work with this resolution. So first step is to make our paper. And to do this, we'll click on the adjustment layer icon at the bottom of the layers panel. And I'm gonna to go to pattern fill. Now it defaults to this spirally yellow pattern, which is quite nice. And there's absolutely no reason why you couldn't use this. But I'm gonna go for more of a traditional paper texture. So I'll click on the pattern icon here and you'll see this drop down. And in my version of Photopea anyway, it starts off with that yellow pattern and then the one to the side of it is called Paper 6. I'm going to click on that. As you can see, that's more of a traditional paper texture. You might see some black horizontal lines running across this and that's just where whoever made this pattern didn't do a great job of making it tile properly, but you won't see that once we've done all of our adjustments. Two things I don't like about it is how small the texture is and the colour. So I'll change the scale to 250% and that'll increase the size of the texture itself so it's a lot more visible now, which is great. And as for the colour, I'm going to neutralise it before I then go on to recolour to what I like. And so I'm just going to add a hue saturation adjustment layer and I'm just going to drag the saturation to zero or to minus 100 should I say. So now we've got a good neutral base from which we can add our own colour onto this. And a way I like to do this is, again, click on our adjustment layers and go on color fill. Now, whatever it starts off with, just click OK, because all we're doing now is we're temporarily coming out of that window so we can change the blending mode to multiply. Again, as per usual, you can always experiment with different blending modes, but this is one I like for this. So we'll now go back in and here is where we'll choose the color that we actually want for the paper. Now I've already worked out beforehand that there's one that I quite like, like a recipe as it were, and it's 20 red, 200 green, and 180 blue. Now this is just something that I liked, this kind of teal color, but feel free to scroll through all these colors and just play around until you find what you like. So now we've got the paper texture, we've got the paper color. All I want now is a little bit of lighting on it so it doesn't look so flat and dull. So for this, I'll create a curves adjustment layer. I'll just drag the curve up. You don't have to go too far on this, but now it's brightened the whole canvas, which is not what we want. So I'm going to create a gradient on the layer mask itself. So click on the layer mask next to the curves icon and either press G to access your gradient tool or click on the gradient tool icon in the toolbar here. And make sure that your foreground and background colors are black and white and if they're not or you want to double check just press d on the keyboard and it will default them back to white and black respectively so now i'm going to start in the top right corner make sure you're on the layer mask with the gradient tool and i'm going to drag in and now as you can see it's added that area of light coming in from the corner and I'm choosing to bring it in from the top right corner because the lighting effects that I'm going to put on shortly onto the text will all be based around a similar angle of lighting so it should all go nicely together but you can do it from the top from the side however you like little tip here if you do any kind of gradient map um, sorry gradient tool on a layer mask and it's giving you the opposite of what you want like this so instead of the corner lightening up it's actually darkening from the corner all you do is click on the layer mask and press Command or Control I, depending on if you're a Mac or a PC, and it will invert the layer mask and then it should give you what you need. So now I'm gonna click on that top layer, hold Shift and click on the bottom layer so it highlights them all, and just drag them into the group icon down here. And I'm just gonna call this BG for background. So that's our initial paper texture sorted. Now we wanna create the text that we're actually gonna cut out from this paper. So I'm just going to press T for the type tool, or again, choose it from the icon at the side, but it's always good to learn the shortcuts. I'm just going to click down anywhere in the middle of this canvas. I'm just going to type cut out. Of course, you can type whatever you want here. 
let's just scale it up so we can see what we're doing and go to the character icon here and if you don't have this by the way just go to the window menu and choose it from here character and it will put that CHA section here on the on the bar I'm going to change this to a type that I quite like for this job which is Berkshire Swash Swash sorry and I just think this works quite well for this kind of effect so I'm going to enlarge it and just roughly center it well center it exactly and I'm not worried about the color here because we're going to change that within the layer styles and I'll explain why in a, in a minute so now we've got our text here we're going to do all the rest of the effects within the blending mode layer styles sorry within the blending option layer styles and the easiest way to access that is just to double click next to the word cutout on the layer in this empty space double click and it will bring up this layer style window and we're going to do everything else in here so step number one is to take the fill slider here and take it all the way to zero now it is making the type temporarily disappear but that's only making the original font color disappear all the effects we add will still be apparent and we want to bring a color back into it but we wanted to be able to see the paper texture through it and this is why we're going to recolor it this way so the first thing is click on color overlay and as a default it will give you this bright red or whatever you last used we'll change the blending mode to color and now if you click on the color swatch at the side you'll see you can change that to whatever you like and if you also notice it's keeping the paper texture through it um, but again I've got a value here that I've experimented with and I quite like so I'm just going to type this in which is 240 red 90 green and 130 blue I'll click OK so that's our base color sorted and what we're going to move on to next is inner shadow and it's the inner shadow that will give the main effect that these letters are cut out from a piece of paper so this kind of pinky magenta colour will almost be like a different coloured piece of paper sitting behind our original. So we'll just check the box next to Inner Shadow. And at first it won't be, it won't look very good. But I've been experimenting with this, so I'm going to type in the values that I've been playing with. So in the blend mode, I do want to keep it on multiply, but I'll click on the black next to it. And what we'll do instead of black, because black shadows don't really happen much in real life there's not no such thing really as a completely neutral shadow so the best thing is if you just click on the color of the actual text here anywhere and then it'll have selected that color and then if you just drag it down to a darker shade of the same color and click OK now our shadows are gonna have a hint of that kind of pink in them which will look a lot more realistic so for this, I've already experimented previously, so I'm going to type in my own values, which is opacity 30, distance 10, size 25. And what I'm going to just do here is change the angle to 45 degrees. And if you see this use global angle here, when that's checked, that just means that everything else you create with that checkbox marked it will automatically be at 45 degrees so it keeps everything nice and uniform so now we want to create another inner shadow but there's only one option here so we can click on this plus at the end oh I didn't actually mean to do um, didn't mean to do three but you can do quite a few so we've now got two of the same so I'm going to go to the second one I'm going to add some slightly different values here. I'm going to change the blending mode to normal and not multiply because I don't want this to be intensified on top of itself too much. I'm going to put the opacity at 45, the distance at 40, and I'm going to leave the size at 25. Now, the only reason I'm doing two inner shadows here is to just get a little bit more of a realistic shadow. Sometimes if you just use a single shadow, it it almost looks too simple and it, it just looks a little bit fake but by putting two at slightly different distances and settings it will just make a little bit more of a complicated shadow which just looks a little bit nicer to the eye now when we've got it to this point we can now 
play with the opacity a bit more of both of the shadow layers and try and strengthen where we feel. I don't want to go too I don't want to go too crazy, but if I turn off the second one, you'll see what it's doing. So the first one is our kind of our main shadow, and this is giving it a bit of a cutout look already. And then the second one is it's almost like a secondary shadow that's maybe a little bit further out. And it just it just helps to make it look more interesting. So we'll leave it at that for the moment. Now what I want to do is I want to use drop shadow to give this paper a little bit of a 3D look. So let me explain. If I just click on drop shadow at the bottom and we'll use the global angle for this one, but we will change it in the next. So what I'm doing here is I want to add an effect of a slight highlight coming from the top right and a slight shadow coming from the bottom left to just make the paper look like it's raised a little bit around where it's cut out. And so for this, then we'll do the shadow, which the angle's correct, 45 degrees, because the light's coming from the top right, so the shadow would be more to the bottom left. But what I'm gonna do here is multiply, and black is fine for this, you can just keep it on black, because it's gonna be so subtle. Opacity, I'm gonna drop right down to something like 30. Distance, I'm also going to put down to something like 10. And size, I'm going to increase to something like 25. Now that's really subtle on here, and if I turn that on and off, it's we can maybe even go a little bit more subtle. And on its own, it doesn't really look like it's doing much. But if we add another drop shadow layer by clicking on this plus, what we're now going to do is create a highlight coming from the top right. So to do this, this is the only one we need to uncheck use global angle on because we need to make an angle of an opposite figure. So this would actually be minus 145. Okay, the blend mode for this is gonna be screen because we're actually gonna be lightening things and we'll just make it white. So opacity, put this one a little bit higher. Distance 10, that's fine. We want to keep that about the same and 25 is the size. So now if I turn that on and off, you can see we've got a highlight outside the text coming from the top right. And then we've got a bit of a shadow around the text coming from the bottom left. And these two together just give an impression that the paper is just almost like rising up slightly around the text. So again, it's almost like gives it an extra 3D element. So we've got the 3D element outside of the text and the drop shadow, sorry, the inner shadows, which is representing the um, cut out sort of paper underneath. Now there's one more thing we can do here to just give it a little bit more of a finish. If we go to bevel and emboss, I know this might seem quite complicated by the way, but once you've set it up and you've played with your settings, you can just go back in and reuse this and type in whatever text you like. So you only ever have to make this once. So in Bevel Emboss, I'm gonna change it to Outer Bevel, Depth, 125, Size is gonna be two, it's gonna be very small. We'll use the global angle for this. I will change it to, right down here at the bottom, you've got these two sliders, the bottom one we're not gonna use, so take that opacity to zero. So for here, mode, screen is fine, white is fine, and a 75% opacity is fine. So if I turn this on and off, if you look closely at the lettering, it's just put a tiny little highlight just on the very edge of where, again, because if you look at the image and we put that curve, bringing some light in from the top right, that's just almost giving it the impression it's just hitting a little bit of a highlight on the very edge of the paper. And it actually gives it, you know, a little bit more of a 3D effect. So if I just press OK on that and we'll see where we are. Let me zoom back out. So now as you can see, we've got quite a nice effect going on there. And the beauty about this is, because it's all it's all layer styles within a text. So you can now change this to whatever you like. And you can real time edit this. If 
photop and it will update with all those effects and settings no matter what you change it to and you can change the font itself so let's go in here and just choose something just choose something completely different so we'll go to that and as you can see it's retained all the effects and you can do whatever you like to this you can go back in change the color you can even turn the color overlay off and it just looks like it's cut out onto the same paper behind it but it generally stands out more if you if you edit the color overlay here you can make it darker lighter whatever you like go to all different colors 